friends, Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here on the back deck and I'm getting this video out earlier than I thought because, well, we actually have some really nice weather going on and I don't know how long it's going to last, expecting those spring rains to come anytime. But maybe we're going to be making up for the heavy, heavy winter rains we had. We'll see. Garden isn't real pretty yet. Not a whole lot of greenery going on, as you can see in the background here. But I want to show you a few things that we've been doing, getting things cleaned up, at least so you can see the difference of what things look like now when it looks really just sparse and boring, and how it will look later in the summer once things are growing and everything's filled in. And especially here, you wouldn't be able to see any of this stuff behind me come midsummer because the grapevines and blueberries fill all of this in. But yeah, we're doing some cleanup and I just want to show you a few more of the projects we need to get done hopefully this year but we'll see what happens things just get so busy all the time and we don't always get all the projects done that we want okay so let's get to this all right so starting here from this corner what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture of how this little corner looked last year with the different things growing in it now this year I'm not doing any pansies in these pots I'm actually starting some calendula seed here and I'm going to be doing some lettuce here I did put some pansy seed seed up there but I kind of doubt it's going to do very good I don't usually do great growing pansies from seed but I think or violas I should say but we'll see you know I'll just go ahead and put those up there if nothing else I might just plant some more lettuce up there because this part here during the summer does stay shaded a good part of the day it just gets the morning light mostly and so this is why this is actually a good place for me to grow lettuces but again in these pots I'm just starting using it to start my calendula seed until I want to move them to some various places around and then this pot here is where I'll probably put some of my dwarf nasturtiums but I also grow my beans I've actually already planted a few beans in there now so in my pots is the first place I like to plant my beans and um, and in the ground will probably be a couple more weeks before I put uh, the beans in the ground but the ones I grow in pots get started now this here is a fig that was sent to me by uh, D Bunker it's actually the healthiest looking one I see it's got a new leaf most of the leaves because we don't get down to the post office uh, very often and so it might have sat in there for a few days so most of them had very wilted leaves but i planted them all and hopefully they'll be springing back that's my solar oven over there and then here are our two grapefruits we keep them inside most of the time but since it's sunny we have them sitting out here getting as much direct sun as they can. This is the one that had the scale on it, still looking free from bugs. My spray that I talked about in that last garden video is very effective and I just, I've sprayed it down a few times and no return of the bugs. So again, I will, if you're interested in that recipe, it's a couple years old now, but I'll go ahead and link to it in the description box down below. And there's Cody. This is where he likes to hang out in the day. So he's got his own special blanket that we set out here. Oh, it's a chicken. Were the chickens chasing you and being mean? Yeah, chickens like to pick on the dog sometimes. Sometimes they all get along great. Uh, blueberries are getting some buds on them and should be really taken off soon. The grapevines are always the last thing to really start showing any signs of growth, but I did look close and saw some buds starting to come on. And then, yes, this is my old fashioned. Uh, clothesline it's actually we put some new cording in it ourselves this is vintage it's not antique so I we believe it comes from the 1940s and so this I like this because uh, it goes all the way across our deck and I can actually just roll it up to get it out of the way if we ever need it I didn't get to use it pretty much at all last year because we put the new roof on and we had to get it out of the way so we got an all metal roof Patrick did quite a bit of the work himself and you can see my canning I was out here canning some more carrots. We managed to get another good batch of carrots and uh, got those canned up so I can get all that out of the way before I have to can my own goods. Now right there is another one of those figs. It's looking really sad, but I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping it'll spring back. Got some strawberries here and I did you can see I planted some more strawberries there and then oh this is a this is one of my currants. And then over on this corner is another, the same. This is the cherry red. It's a very bright red, as you can see in the picture I'll put right here. Pat's been throwing some uh, wood shavings from the shop in there, and so we've just been letting the chickens do the work on that. I did go ahead and put a little netting around my perennial herb garden here because the chickens kept um, 
tearing up my valerian that's coming up there and another valerian over there and some echinacea and a few other things. Uh, for whatever reason, they've been keeping those tore up, but the echinacea that's coming up over here is looking pretty good. It's not all tore to shreds like, like the other ones. And again, I just let the dandelions come up where they want. These are just a few of my extra potatoes I went ahead and stuck back here and put some little fencing that I could find around it so the chickens won't dig them up. Right there is where my beans will go. The tomatillos go on the other side. There's a lavender corn all over in there. If you watched a video I did a while back on um, basically laying out a map of this whole area, you can, you'll can you be able to see kind of what my plans are. They might change a little bit, but there's my lamb's ear coming along. It's always one of the first herbs to really start waking up in the spring. And then right here, Patrick got this all hooked up. This is our watering system that comes off of our rainwater tanks. And I guess eventually we will do a video on our rainwater, our whole setup, eventually, hopefully sometime within the next couple months. This is the last fruit tree that we have in a pot, which is clearly grown through the pot. You can't even move it now. This is the one we're thinking about taking out to the property since we already have one here. Uh, I hacked this blackberry back quite a bit, but now can see all the new growth coming on and again it's been in this pot the whole time but uh, pretty sure it's grown through the pot <laughs> and then right along there is where I like to grow my lettuces mostly I started out growing strawberries there and they did okay the first couple of years but then when the the uh, grapevines you just get really thick and they totally just block this off and then very little sun gets in here except for early morning sun. And the strawberries need a more sun than that, but the lettuce loves it here. It's perfect for the lettuce. And all these pipes and things eventually will explain what that's all about. They're not currently being used, but there's a reason why we have those there. And then there's another one of those figs. So again, hoping hoping it will survive. So this pot here is another place I like to plant my, my runner beans. And you can see I got some strawberries in there too. And so then they'll climb up this chain and then if they do, if they keep going, they'll just grow right across. In fact, you can see I've got some bean from here from last year. I'll just let them go right across those uh, lights right there. And there's the greenhouse where the chickens like to take their dust baths. Actually, Broomhilda was nice enough to let me catch that video the other day, and I'll go ahead and put it again here. A little clip of her taking her dust bath. But I want to get my tomatoes in the ground soon, so I think what I might do is put some netting here and along there so the chickens can at least have this area for a little while longer and then I can plant at least some of my tomatoes to get them out of these pots because they're getting they're just you can tell they're needing to come out but I'm wanting to give the chickens more free grain in here for a little bit longer this is my chicory I've already taken half of them out and transplanted them you can see my dwarf nasturtiums coming up uh, the peppers, when I moved them out here, these are my Chinese five color. I love them so much, but they just slowed way down once I moved them out here. And these pots here, I have planted my Emily basil, my favorite basil. I've got some zucchini, black beauty zucchini, just recently started in those pots, so nothing to see there yet. And some more various herbs here. I, uh, some more echinacea, because I'm trying to get lots of echinacea. This is from my own seed, from my own plants from last year. And then over on this opposite side, this is the north side, that's why it's not very sunny, is I've got a whole bunch of um, sunflowers started. So I'll be moving those out once we block off that section of garden so the chickens can't dig them up. And a few lettuces. Um, I didn't, for some reason, a lot of them, I might have just started them too soon and it was just too cold. So quite a few of them didn't even germinate but that's okay I've planted more since I've got lettuce planted everywhere okay, and as you can see there's my clothesline it goes from the greenhouse clear over to the playhouse slash chicken coop over there now this is the part that I'm always not showing because it's embarrassing to me but it's looking better we're finally getting it cleaned up this is our fire pit which obviously we can't use right now because of this but I had a whole bunch of garden scraps piled up here that we finally got taken care of and uh, eventually we still got to cut up this rotten wood and deal with that and then this here Patrick was given all these all this stuff down here uh, over a year ago so there's some I think there's six by sixes or maybe four by sixes down in there and then we were given these 
panels right here and so he's just got them over the top of these to protect them so they've been out here for over a year and I'm hoping to get them out of here this year so I can open all this up again and have our little rebuild our fire pit again and have this back so that you know we can enjoy this area again like we used to be able to do with our old thing is old rocker now over here you can see we recycle we found these at the dump these old tin uh, roofing material or siding whatever it is and we've been using it for various things well these hedges are great patrick just prune these up so they look all nice and neat at least here can't quite get across there the neighbor has to take care of that part himself but um we did he did just get this nice and flat i hate the way these look but we have to have them up because the dog can get through there and so what I've been doing is, it looks like a mess right now. Do you see all these sticks right here? I've been transplanting a lot of my woolly lambs ear, my uh, fever few, and some different plants over here that do really well and grow really good and like lots of sun. I probably put some mint over here. So what that'll do is I'll kind of grow up and sort of um, kind of camouflage the ugly siding there and not look quite so uh, ugly. <laughs> but anyway, the reason I have all these sticks around them they're like pieces of uh, grapevine and, br and fruit tree branches and a little bit of fencing because I don't have enough of that fencing and I don't feel like buying anymore. But that's just to kind of keep the chickens from digging up the new plants I've put in there until they get well. Once they're ro well rooted, the, they'll be fine. This is where my squash, my pumpkin, and my orange butternut. I decided I'm just going to stick with the two this year, the, the New England, the pie pumpkins, and then the butternut squash. I'm going to be putting some of those in here and so, and so that they can climb up here. And then on the opposite side where I've got this fiberglass piece is just to, I've got peas planted behind there and that's just to keep the chickens from digging them up and the robins from pulling them up. And so you can see right there, there's some coming up. Once those get big enough, what I plan to do is do like I did before and then this whole area here will get blocked off so the chickens can no longer go in there and then I'll be planting my squash and then I can take that out because the, then the peas will be big enough, the robins will leave them alone and then the chickens won't be able to get in there and uh, dig it up. So yes, we like to allow the chickens to roam free in these areas for as, for as long as we can because they just do a really great job of keeping all the baby slugs, the eggs, the other kinds of pests cleaned up out of the garden. And plus they till things and they poop in there and just, you know, really add to the soil. Now I want to show you one other, what I call hillbilly piles. Just, just to show you, these are areas I don't usually like to show very much and that's over here on this side. Yeah, so this is another pile that we're working on right here. Um, these are our old gutters. So we got, when we did the roof, we got all new gutters and we have a friend that's uh, wanting these. So for now, they're just sitting here. This is some lumber that Patrick's going through, sorting through the bad stuff, get, getting the rotten stuff all cut up, uh, cut up so we can just burn it and get rid of it. We got a couple of pallets here we don't know what we're gonna do with yet. So it's just some, some of these areas. This is supposed to be our firewood, one of our firewood storage areas. But uh, until Patrick finishes this fence, because the idea, you see how over there on the right next to the chicken coop, the fence goes way up. The whole idea is to do this all the way across so that we can have more privacy and uh, between us and for the sake of the neighbors as well. So we can all have a little more privacy. All right, well, that's it for today's video. I know it's not very exciting because there's just not a lot of beauty out here. And I still have the West Side Herb Garden that I'm going to do eventually. I'll talk you through that and show you what's going on there. But uh, one more thing I wanted to say before I go is that I had on my, my last video that I actually just published today, the day I'm shooting this. So whatever today is, I don't know, April 9th, I think, that I'm shooting this video. Well, um, some people talked about rotating crops. Yes, that's very important. But when you live, when you're working with a small area like we're doing here, we don't have the space to rotate. And we have to plant things where they're gonna like it best. So yes, I grow my zucchini in the same spot every year. I grow my potatoes in the same spot every year. But how we make up the difference with that is like in that area, I also, once I dig up all those potatoes, I will plant 
amaranth in there and that will help nourish the soil refeed the soil as well as give us a, a pretty plant that provides nourishment in other ways because those leaves are edible too not just the seeds and it's pretty and so that just that does a lot for the soil plus I usually have other herbs and various things kind of growing there amongst things just like I do out here in the main garden bed and pretty much everywhere else I don't do rows and I, I talked about this in another video I don't do just a whole bunch of rows com, you know conventional style of just one crop I do that a little bit with the corn simply because it's so tall but I also allow borage and other things to grow in there and dandelions to grow in there among the corn so it keeps that soil fed and then of course we amend it through this you know through the whole year adding grass clippings and leaves and various things and that's what helps make up the difference why we don't have to worry about rotating their crops and we haven't had any issues so yes some things I will move around and try in new places but for the most part where once we find a spot where things do the best that's where it's going to grow we just do what we can to make up the difference of not rotating it and we got to think about it things in the wild a lot of those things are going to keep growing in the same place but what's the difference they've got a lot of other plants growing in there right along with them but if you're interested in what i said about yeah you know about the whole idea of composting and companion planting i will also go ahead and link to that earlier video i did uh down below in the description box again don't forget to hit show more just below the video if you're on a computer or if you're on a smart device look for that little gray arrow off to the side and right below the video and uh, then you can you just open up the description box you'll be able to see all of our links our contact information and uh, whatever else that I put in there all right well I hope you're enjoying the garden update videos and I again I know it doesn't look very pretty right now but it will all right well we'll see you on the next garden update thanks for watching take care and God bless